video for the Cortex temperature control vaping system from Inakin, as well as the iSub S tank. Here are two variations of the iSub S tank, one for flavoring clouds, one for temperature control. The temperature control iSub S tank comes with your choice of titanium coil and nickel Ni200 coils. We'll take a look at those in a moment. And then the iSub S tank comes with your choice of 0.5 ohm canthol, a 20 to 35 watt coil, and a bottom vertical coil that's a Clapton coil from 30 to 70 watts. And included in the Cortex temperature control vaping system, you get the mod and an iSub S tank with the Canthol 20 to 35 watt coil, the Canthol 30 to 70 watt coil, that Clapton bottom vertical coil, as well as a nickel Ni200 coil. Here are the specs on this kit. 3300 milliamp hour internal battery. And here's all the details. This is from Inakin Technology. Here are the warnings if you are in any of these categories of people or ailments, don't use this product. There is an authenticity code. You can scratch that off and check with Inakin to see if you got an authentic product. These things do get cloned. Here's the box that comes in. Here's a quick user guide. Just a quick at a glance, keep this handy. And then here's the mod itself. Here's your USB, micro USB. Here's your 510 connection, slightly, slightly raised. Here's your fire button, power button. Three clicks turns it on and off. Your screen is on the bottom. And here's your plus and minus buttons, as well as menu options. We'll go through that in a minute. So your 510 connection is on the top. Your screen is on the bottom. Your power button is here. So yeah, that's how you see what's going on and then you vape. Interesting. Here's the tank. We'll take a close up look at the tank and the mod in just a minute. Let's see what else is in this box. Pulling out this tray. Spare O-rings and that metal piece wherever that goes. It's a lot of a lot of rubber in here, a lot of silicone or whatever this is. You have two spare coils. This is the these are both the Canthol coils, the 20 to 35 watt and the 30 to 70 watt. So the Canthol coils do not come installed but they come in the box. An extra drip tip without airflow. I'll show you that in a minute. This is an optional drip tip in case you don't like the drip tip that comes with the tank. A USB to micro USB charging cable that's several feet long, two to three feet long. And more in detail, user manual. Read this, read this read this. And some stickers. That's it. We're going to go through the quick user guide. In a minute. All the coils are the same type of housing, so they're interchangeable. And this just shows you that you have your choice of titanium. And this is the nickel coil, the 0.1 ohm coil. That's good for 356 to 518 degrees Fahrenheit that comes in the Apex iSub S tank. 
What should we look at first, the mod or the tank? Let's look at the tank because it's quicker and easier. So from the bottom to the top, here is your 510 connection, which is also the bottom of the coil. And there's the base of the tank. Press fitted. Parts. Here's your airflow. Your airflow is nice and clicky. Hear that? So you have your choice of mouth to lung, less restrictive mouth to lung, and then you have what all the way up to wide open slots on either side. This is the drip tip. It has a plastic inner surface. It has airflow. So you can adjust your airflow in the drip tip. If you don't like that, there is an optional replacement drip tip that comes in the kit that does not have those airflow slots. So you have your choice there. This is not removable. And here is how you top fill the tank. You see that arrow, that little logo of a dropper bottle. Turn in the direction of the arrow to open the top fill. You choose one, fill, one hole to fill and the other hole is air pressure release or whatever. And this little picture of a person vaping and the, you turn in the direction of the arrow for the person vaping and you go this way. Notice that beaded up liquid, that is machine oil, that is not juice, this just came out of the box. I've not used this yet, so this is going to need thorough cleaning. And here's how you replace the coils. By the way, here's the airflow control working. Interesting that that mechanism is actually out in the open. So putting the tank back together is very simple. The coil goes in the base. It's got these shapes here to fit right into that slot. And this screws on. Airflow is closed. Turn it this way. Fill it up. Close it. Ready to vape. But I'm going to give it a thorough cleaning. Let's get okay, real close up with this I sub S and totally disassemble it. Um, yeah, it breaks down smaller, which is nice to know. Okay, so here's the bottom. I don't have a coil in right now. Here's your airflow piece with the airflow control. All right, we looked at this already. We saw that piece. So this. This is where the coil housing, you know, the coil goes right into that housing. You can further disassemble this tank, unscrewing this ring here, take that off. I would thoroughly recommend taking pictures or a short video before you pull this thing apart because you're gonna wanna know, before you start pulling these things out, there's a spare parts package that comes with this tank and there's an extra one of these little, this metal ring, there's an extra bunch of shit that comes in there. And, and I'm quite frankly not that curious to take this apart into its barest components, but you can break this tank down further and further. I don't wanna to have to put it back together. Uh, so you can pull the glass sleeve off in case you crack it for replacement. You can clean and you should clean very often underneath these silicone seals. That's where gunk accumulates and festers. Okay. I don't know how far this breaks down if, if all of this shit comes apart, but suffice it to say it at least comes apart this far. And then you can take this ring off and this little center um, silicone thingy. I don't want to have to put that back together. I, I, this is positioned 
in a specific way. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. Um, and I'll show you also, this is pretty cool. The, uh, the top fill that you can see better from this angle. You can see that top fill in action. See that there? Nice, nice. You can see the mechanics of this thing on the inside. All right. Curiosity satisfied? Great. That's how you get in there and clean it. It's got a lot of working parts inside of it. It's a very complex, well-designed tank. I mean, the vape on this is great. It doesn't leak. I'm surprised with all of that shit going on. It's very busy on the inside here. I'm surprised it doesn't leak, but I haven't had any leaking issues. And this thing just presses in. It presses in. There's a, there's a gasket inside here. And it presses in to seal against that gasket. Uh, I notice there's this gap here. You're not going to get rid of that gap by pushing it in. It's not, it's not that it's not seated correct. Okay, so that just gets squished into place with this ring. So you tighten that. All right, hand tight. And then his, and then you put your coil in, and then everything seals up nice and snug. There you go. Back in business. Now let's go through this quick user guide. Three clicks turns it on and off. Here's the screen. Annoying that it's on the bottom, but I suppose it. Uh, I could, you know, you can live with it. Notice this edge here does is raised, so it does protect the screen, so the screen isn't going to be hitting on a flat surface. And these buttons, these buttons will also be protected. So that's nice. At least if you're going to do a screen on the bottom, have it inset a little bit, ever so slightly. Can you see that? Okay. It's finishing. It's a good emery board. You can file your nails. It's a quick operation guide is going to show us how to go through this menu. Without an atomizer on there, don't hit the power. Uh, it's just going to tell you check atomizer. So, to go through from wattage to temperature control, you hit the plus button and the power button for couple of seconds. There we are in temperature control. Back to wattage mode. Back to temperature control. Now that it's showing me I'm in temperature control, I hit the plus and minus buttons, hold them down. And now I can select which metal, nickel, titanium, and that's back to wattage mode. So we'll go hit the power button to stay with nickel because we have a nickel coil in our I sub S tank. Now that we have a new tank on, we have an atomizer on, we're going to hit the plus and minus at the same time. See how that is asking me? Select coil, I hit power. I just calibrated for my coil, for my nickel coil, I just calibrated and it's taking that resistance 0.14 for nickel and now it's going to do, now let's see if this will actually, no liquid, watch this. Okay, it's ready to vape. This tank is bone dry, I have no, no juice in here whatsoever. So instantly it's going to read it, no liquid. Now. It did power this for a second. I do. The cotton does smell a wee bit like toasted, just a little bit, because for that second, that split second, yeah, and it's slightly hot. So it got up to temperature. Okay, I'm gonna see. I don't know how well this thing is gonna taste now, but now that I've showed you, it does shut down power 
on a dry burn test, this cortex work so did we what are it was back doing. and I am in nickel mode, 440 degrees max temperature in temperature control mode. And everything looks to be functioning correctly. It's not leaking. Priming in a coil for me is a slow and patient process. Juice tastes really good in there. I get the peach, I get the pear, and I get that cream of the vanilla ice cream. Mmm. I actually like that flavor in this tank with that coil. Now, there is no burnt taste. When I did my dry burn test before and this thing uh, shut down and went into temperature protection, I, I, there was a, a little bit of heat on the coil when I took it out. There was a little bit of an odor of toastedness, not burnt, not scorched. It did what it was supposed to do. So, I don't love nickel as a metal to use. It's definitely not my favorite thing of all time in vaping. Neither is ceramic. I'm not even a big fan of titanium. Although if I had to pick, I would prefer titanium over nickel and ceramic. I do prefer stainless steel, which this one does not do. So when you see me breaking in canthol or stainless steel coils, I will go from low wattage to high. With this, I don't feel like going back and forth into the menu settings. So what I'm doing is short puffs and then longer puffs. As I feel the metal is breaking in and the coil is breaking in and it can, and I taste from the flavor, the flavor is coming through more and more as the flavor comes through. I go a little bit longer. That's good. Then I go a little bit longer. So I'm testing the waters and then expanding just a little further each time. The flavor is tasting great. <clears throat> Look at this little nice device. You know, they have a product line here. They have the T18, the Endura T18. That's, uh, I believe, a 1,000 or 1,200 milliamp hour battery. Then you got the T22, which is a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. Now you've got the Cortex with a 3,300 3, milliamp hour battery. The same battery life as the Inokin Cool Fire 4. Yep. Fits nicely in the palm of the hand. This would be good for a beginner. No. I don't like the nickel for beginners, but an intermediate vapor who wants, and I believe this is somewhere around 60 to 65 bucks, maybe 70 bucks. So here's Inokin entering in their first, their first entry into the temperature control arena. I think they did a very good job right out of the box in first use, first looks at this. So you've had a chance to watch me vape on this in nickel mode with the nickel coil in the iSub S tank. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of mixy matchy. First in size comparison, the best way for me to demonstrate its size is to hold it up to things you're already familiar with. It's a bit shorter, a bit thinner, same thickness as the IPv4S. And then here is the Sigali 150 watt old school no temperature control, it's shorter, it's about the same width, and it's narrower. And this is my SMY 200, DNA 200, same height, same thickness, just a little bit narrower. And see matchy yeah. with some different tanks. Suppose I've got this I sub S, I'm vaping with it, I like it, but now I want a different vape experience and I want to get a Heracles Plus. Yeah, it looks very nice on here. The Heracles Plus is a 22 millimeter diameter tank and it sits just about almost flush, maybe a, a half a millimeter on each side, um, thinner. Than 70 watts in wattage mode. Let's go ahead and see how it vapes that. Vapes it just fine. Let's see how it performs with a RDA. 
put a nice low profile like the dinghy or the Derringer or this is the Druid RDA from Aug Vape and it, it kind of looks nice on there. Okay, how do we do? Plenty of power. 70 watts, powering it just fine. That's 4.48 volts on a 0 0.290 velocity clone, tobacco clone. That doesn't look bad on there at all. Let me just flush it up. Yep, there it is. That looks pretty good on there. And this happens to be a pretty aggressive build. This is a quad stack. It can push the wattage. And it can handle the amp draw. 5.11 volts, 0.37 ohm build. So why am I showing you this mixy matchy? Because maybe you've bought this and you're an advanced beginner and now you want to explore broader ranges of what you can do. At least you're not just locked in with this setup. And you can start mixing and matching and trying dripping if you want to go that direction and trying sub ohm tanks if you want to go that direction and know that this mod is still going to be functional and practical for you to still continue to use and you didn't waste your money just locking yourself into one set, one device. All right, I want to talk about my thoughts overall. Um, I give it a thumbs up. I think it's good for the value. I think it's a good buy. Um, the form factor of it is nice. Okay, um, 3,300 milliamp hours, effective temperature control that does what it's supposed to do. We did the dry burn test. We showed you that it does uh, temperature control and it does shut power if the coil is dry. So you can't really get into much trouble there. I like the fact they have a titanium coil option as well as Canthal, and this will power those 30 to 70 watt coils, the bottom vertical Clapton coils that Inikin also makes. So you have different coil options, which is nice. Um, I'm not crazy about this finish. It kind of is like chalky to me, and it gives me a little bit of like that rough scratching your fingers down a blackboard kind of feel. Um, but then again, any gunk that like accumulates on this, you could just kind of rub right off or take a damp like paper towel and, and, and it brushes right off. So the finish on this is, I don't know what the finish is, but it's pretty durable. So it doesn't feel like it's a coating that's going to just rub off easily. Um, that's nice. I don't like that bottom screen. However, if you're going to have a screen on the bottom, this raised upper lip does protect the screen from getting scratched for the most part, and it does protect those buttons from getting pushed. The device is not janky at all. It feels solid, well put together. There's no rattle. Um, it's very simple. You plug it in, you charge it. The menu uh, is very simple to scroll through. I like this quick reference card that you can carry pretty close at hand without having to have the whole user manual. And it will walk you through the menu options if you're halfway familiar with them with a, uh, pretty easily. Um, the tank I like. I like this tank because I like the iSub line of tanks as far as a beginner or advanced beginner or even intermediate the tank itself. I don't need, I'm not crazy about this top airflow. I don't really need that. And I don't know how to shut that off. I don't think it's adjustable at all. Um, so, but it's nice that they give you another drip tip that you can just take that out and not have that top airflow. Um, the top fill is nice. It works. It's functional. It's not janky. It's actually pretty simple and foolproof. You know, just be mindful. You've got those holes. You've got to get juice in and they're Barely uh, okay for a glass dropper from one of these bottles. It's better if you have like needle nose or unicorn type of uh, fill bottles. Then you won't get such a mess like I showed you. I love the airflow options on this. The airflow options to have uh, just one hole open for mouth to lung and then maybe less restricted two holes, three holes mouth to lung and then maybe just and then going to the slot where you can get a restricted long draw and then you know, a wide open 
These are very big air slots. See, the airflow is very nice. You have as much airflow as you want or as little airflow as you want. And that, those are some nice features. So we've got an affordable $50 to $75 kit that comes with a mod and a tank and a mod that's useful and functional even beyond the capabilities of this tank and these coils. So there you go. It's a good value for $50 to $75. I feel like it's a win. If that's your style of vaping and you feel that this product would suit your needs, you're going to be very happy and satisfied with it. Thank you very much for watching Quest for Vape. Thank you very much for watching my channel. If you like this video and you want to see other videos on beginner and advanced setups and also how to uh, build your RDA and your RTAs, um, tune in for other videos that I have. Thank you very much for watching Quest for Vape.